I think if it wasn't lockdown, I would have missed a lot of rugby and people would have forgot about me. I never thought, probably would have never played the game again after everything I went through. When World Rugby, a player of the year and World Cup winner, Peter Steff de Toy, isn't playing for his country or for his club, the Stormers, this is where he returns to. The family farm about an hour northeast of Cape Town. Hi! Hey, Alma. How are you? Good and you? Good, thank nice you. Nice to see you. Yes, it's lovely to be here. No. What's this one's name? Rover. Hello, Rover. <laughs> No. Okay. No, let me sit around a bit. Okay. Awesome. awesome. You could just spend your days in the vineyards and you choose to run into people for a living for 80 minutes roughly every week. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's, it's only quite a simple, simple answer and of course I love what I do. So. At the end of the day, it's just you have to do what you love and yeah, rugby is close to my heart and it's, it's part of our family as well. So you guys are a long line of Peter Steffs that way. You are number? You're I'm, the, the, I'm the seventh. Seventh yes. Peter Steffs that way. Your son is the eighth. Yes. Your grandfather played for the Springboks. You know, it must cast quite a shadow over your childhood rugby if everyone knows that that guy's grandfather played for the Springboks. Yeah, so that, that was always a dream. When I was a young boy, I realized what the Springboks stand for and that my grand, grandfather played for the Springboks and when I saw his blazer and his rugby jerseys and that was something I always admired and dreamt of becoming a Springbok. I still remember at night when we were having a braai on Friday nights and Saturday nights, laying on the grass and looking up to the, the stars and just praying and wishing to become one of the best Springboks ever played the game. And that is that's something that I always, at, tried for and uh, hopefully achieved. Um, like you said, my grandfather was, was one of the greats and for me to play for the Springboks is an unbelievable honor and privilege. I love the photos in this tasting room because there's, there's a bit of like rugby memorabilia and then you and your brothers getting stuck in helping to make the wine. I'm sure people who come here, how much of it is for that? Yeah, this is a lot of uh, jerseys and photos from my grandfather's time. And my father said he, he thought it would be a great idea to share it for the, for the public as well and rather keep it to ourselves. And it's something very special to, 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 to our whole family as well. You clearly just had this unshakable conviction from a very young age that this was going to happen for you. Yeah, so I, I, I believed in myself a lot. I always, when I was at high school as well, there was always players that talked about other players. I was never the one that was talked about. I wasn't that good at school. I only started playing well when in my, my final year. And then luckily enough, someone uh, saw me play against a big school. And then I played well. And from there, I got a contract from the Sharks. But it, it just shows you right time, right place. And it played a massive role in my career. So injury has, unfortunately, it's like your, your rugby career is one story. And then there's this parallel story that weaves in and out the whole time. Yeah. You had an ACL. You were out for all of 2014, right? 2014, yes. Then you did the same knee, 2015. the same injury, almost, what was it, a year to the day? Yeah, a year and one day. And then the only reason you managed to get recover in time for the 2015 World Cup later that year was because your dad gave you his tendon? I flew down the Sunday from Cape, from Bloemfontein to Cape Town and the Monday my father said he'll take me to the doctor. I went to the same doctor in Cape Town and my father said, but can't you take my hamstring or his tendon to fix my ligament? And it's because he wanted to find a donor. The next morning we both went into the hospital. Um, I went into the operating room first, he came in second and we both woke up next to each other outside. My mother drove us home and we got to the farm. Um, he got out, normally just walked, went back to farming. I walked my crutches, went to bed and yeah, it was, was a long road of recovery there. The rest of us spent lockdown hold up because the world went through a lot. You spent lockdown hold up because once again, yeah. your leg went through a lot. Yeah. So you got into just before lockdown, right? Yes, against the Blues on Newland. In the first half, I got a big hit on my quad and second half, I just received a knock on the same place, two shoulders, and I struggled to walk. Then I told the doctor, listen, I think we need to go to the hospital. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, they had to do an emergency operation there that night. Um, and they cut my leg open, there's a big scar about I think 40 centimeters on the side of my quad. 
and uh, because of all the swelling they couldn't cl close the, the wound again. And then I was in the hospital till the Friday, the Friday they sent me home with this open wound to the side, but luckily there was something they could put over to stop the infection, like a vacuum dressing. And in that week or two weeks I lost about 10 kgs and that's, that's how it was possible for them to close my leg. Because you lost so much weight? Because I lost so much weight, so luckily enough at the end of the day it got closed. When I started with rehab, there was a bit of uh, complications. The, the muscles wasn't working together on the side and the nerves. I had to go in for a second operation or a fourth operation on the leg again. Luckily enough, it was lockdown. I think if it wasn't lockdown, I would have missed a lot of rugby and people would have forgot about me. And I would have become negative and um, lose confidence and probably, yeah, I never thought, probably would have never played the game again after everything I went through. But, because I had so much time, I didn't miss any Springbok rugby. I'm very fortunate or humbled that I'm, I'm able to play again. Jeez. I don't think any of us realized it was that serious. We're going to have to talk about the 2019 Rugby World Cup because that was just remarkable. The result of winning the Rugby World Cup, when you guys came back, all of that footage that we saw of fans lining the streets, even in townships, the kind of unity that we saw in South Africa, you guys managed to build that unity almost internally before it started spilling over to the rest of us. But I mean, did you see the videos during the tournament from back here in South Africa, people singing in grocery stores and yes, parking so, so lots? It's always nice to see that videos, but um, for me personally, we had a job there to do. And if we lose the World Cup, those stuff will be, no one will remember it. So when we came back and saw all those enjoyment and saw all of the videos, Everything just came to life and you, we actually realized what we did. Um, because when we were there, you never know actually what you did. When you came back home, when you saw all the enjoyment, uh, what it meant to the people, you actually realized what it meant to yourself. So it was unbelievable. What is it that clinched that final? Because it was such an emphatic triumph against yeah. a team who looked very scary against New Zealand just a few days prior. They had a lot of confidence, but yeah. we also did co add confidence because we believed in the game plan we were playing, we believe it's going to work. And one thing I think that gave us so much confidence was Rassi and them, the management showed us facts. That England struggled to play two physical games after each other. It might have lied to us or probably just picked the right stuff to convince us. It was an unbelievable journey for us. Everything just worked out perfectly. So the Lions are heading to South Africa. It's amazing that it's kind of come at this point in your career. Timing is truly is everything. But do you have a bit of a target on your back now? I guess we, we've got an expectation. People definitely expect um, good things from us and playing well and definitely beating them as well because we did, we did win the World Cup. So it's going to be a big challenge for us um, to perform the way we did, especially with the Springboks that haven't played since 2019. So. There's going to be a lot of challenges and things we need to conquer to get onto the field. The, the technical stuff always plays a big role and I'm sure the, the management for the Springboks definitely, they won't, won't do the wrong stuff. Prepared quite well, everything will be planned. I think everything is already planned. They are almost fully ahead on, on, on everything that's out again. If we come back here in 10 years time, are you going to be here on the farm? Yes, definitely. This is a place where I grew up. My roots will definitely be here. Um, this is where I'm from and this is where I'll always be. And the family will always be here and, and we'll always try and create something that works for everyone around here. So we'll definitely accept you guys with open arms and enjoy, enjoy a nice coffee here with us. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. Anything's possible. You will make mistakes in life, but it's learning from them. That was growing up like in and out of prison. Sorry. I'm a little bit angry at the situation and he didn't see me win a World Cup. He hasn't seen me become a parent. The same sex relationship. Well, how did you make the decision as to who was going to give um, birth to Oliver? And, we're and entering into conversation, which not many people talk about. Mm. 